Hi, this is Matt Frege. I'd like to have a frank discussion. If you have any involvement or interest in reducing the risk of Legionella and other waterborne pathogens, at least the ones associated with building water systems, I'd like to invite you to join me right now in taking an honest, objective look at what we've learned since 2015 from ASHRAE 188 and New York regulations in the CMS Legionella requirement, as well as an attempt to develop a new water management program standard, and, and then consider what those lessons can show us about our best chances of minimizing cases of Legionnaire's disease over the next five years. The first lesson we have learned is that most facilities will not implement water management programs unless required. Since the 1990s, government and industry organizations have been warning building owners that water systems must be properly managed to reduce the risk of Legionnaire's disease, and they've issued guidelines to explain how, too. Yet only a small percentage of facilities have implemented preventive measures voluntarily. A lot of us thought there would be a major spike in prevention after the release of ASHRAE 188, but it turned out to be only a blip, and that was even after CDC urged compliance with the standard. I don't understand why building owners would object to water management programs, given the benefits versus cost. My opinion is that the personnel responsible for managing the facilities are good people, and they care, but they just can't get the funds approved unless it's required. But whatever the reason, policymakers and, and all of us really would be foolish to assume that simply talking more about Legionella prevention in articles and speeches and at conferences is going to yield a different outcome. The reality is that most facilities have done only what is required, so that's what we should expect going forward. Second, Therefore, I mean, if regulations are required to get facilities to implement water management programs, then state officials are the ones who hold the keys to preventing Legionnaire's disease. The CDC won't establish regulations. CDC has a lot of influence, but it does not issue regulations. That's not what it does. The EPA focuses on water distribution up to the street tap, not on systems within buildings, so, so they're not going to. It's really up to health departments or other state agencies. So experts continue talking about better methods and procedures. That's valuable. We need to keep learning. But it's not going to do any good unless it changes the way systems and buildings are managed. Ultimately, then, at this point, the responsibility for preventing Legionnaire's disease lies with state officials. Third, regulations should be based on a standard. I go into this in more detail in the article that's below, but suffice it to say that based on these lessons learned, it's clear that requiring building owners to comply with a standard will be faster, less expensive, and ultimately more preventive than if each state develops its own set of regulations. And then four, ASHRAE 188 is the best five-year option we have for a standard. It's the best standard on which states can base Legionella regulations, at least for the next five years. Why is that? Well, one, it's ready. Waiting for a better standard, so to speak, would likely take at least five years to finish. ASHRAE 188 took 10 years. And that delay would cost health and life. Second, ASHRAE is a living document. It's in continuous maintenance, so to speak. So it ha there's a formal process for accepting and considering in implementing comments, and ASHRAE has, has made several changes and clarifications based on comments it's already received. ASHRAE 188 outlines the essential elements for a water management plan, too, and ASHRAE is updating guideline 12 to provide some, some additional information, but states can have enough. They have what they need. They can monitor documentation for certain procedures they deem imperative, but within ASHRAE 188, they have what they need to establish a basic regulation. The other reason, too, is that ASHRAE is proven to be trustworthy. For a standard to be regulation worthy, its publisher cannot be tainted by financial conflicts of interest. And ASHRAE has not exploited Standard 188 unfairly, as far as I know. It charges for the document, which is reasonable and has offered a seminar on it, and that's fine. But ASHRAE does not provide services, charge for services required to comply with Standard 188, to my knowledge, and, and has not partnered with or promoted 
a for-profit commercial business providing such services. Now, this issue is crucial because the long-term success of Legionella regulations depends on it. State governments cannot adopt or continue to use a standard that is tainted by financial conflicts of interest. So based on these four lessons, before we have more meetings and conference calls and workshops to talk about Legionella prevention, although those, those can be good, maybe we should just write the governor and top health official in our state to urge them to establish a simple regulation requiring building owners to comply with ASHRAE 188. What do you think about that? Your opinion counts, so please comment below. Thank you.